you ever start training and you can't get a pump, take a break, chug some water. And if you have some salt handy or a pickle, as funny as it sounds, a kosher pickle, just keep a kosher, a jar of kosher pickles in your gym bag, you'll thank me. City niggas really with the shit. Gang banging started here, so don't forget the shit. My city full of insanes and 20 crips. Come together when them SAs be trying to trip. All you see are summer niggas with white tees. This what you resort to when you lose your hoop dreams. What's up, guys? Back at it. Four weeks out yesterday from the 2019 Olympia. Here with my buddy Tom at Siege Athletic. Jericho and Mignola, we're gonna hit some chest and biceps. Feeling good, feeling a little tired, but feeling good, excited. Today's Sunday, so yesterday was officially four weeks out, exactly. I think I'm in a good place for four weeks out. Um, just feeling good, man, just excited. I'll walk you guys through the workout, and I uh, hope you enjoy it. So, I've been starting every workout up with one exercise of abs. Um, just one exercise, like six, seven sets or whatever feels good, simply because I get lazy at the end of the workout and I just want to go home. So instead of skimping on them, I do them in the beginning. Today is hanging leg raises. Now, a traditional leg raise like this, nothing wrong with it, but you're just hinging at the hips. And what happens is you're doing more of your upper quad and core. Whereas I'm trying to curl my back a bit and almost crunch, you know, a crunch is going to activate the abs better than just a traditional Rocky style sit up. You guys know what I'm talking about. When you do a sit up, you're using so much of your hip and the top of your quad and your core, but not necessarily your abs. Whereas here, I'm trying to get my knees into my armpits and curl and crunch. So what I mean by crunch is a traditional, just a crunch. You're gonna really engage your abs. Whereas when you sit up, you're just hinging at the hips. So from here, we did about seven sets there. We'll go into chest. Never do a lot of volume on chest. I'm not a big volume guy, period. But I believe in intensity. So warm up, warm up, go heavy and hard, which I'm not going crazy heavy now. Uh, I've been going heavy the past few weeks. I haven't lost much strength. I lose the endurance. When I get really lean and depleted and I'm low on carbs, I don't last as long, but I am able to lift heavy. What did I do on shoulder press this week, 130s? So I did 130s for 12, that's, that's strong, you know, that's heavy. I failed on the 150s. Um, as long as I don't feel like anything's dangerous or painful, I'll continue to go heavy. I think after years and years of lifting, you don't lose so much strength. And also you're so pumped for the show, you're training with your mind. But in uh, endurance sucks. Like I'll do one or two heavy exercises and I'm done, I'm fried, you know? Because there's not a lot of glycogen in the muscle. Let's get started with chest. So first set we do 60s. I usually recommend warming up with a weight of 50% of your max weight. So, you know, I might go heavier than 120, I might not, but 60s is a good warm up weight for me. Good, come on. Ooh. Four more. Push it. Up. Come on. Up. Give me one more, one more. Good. Up. 
you know, everyone's got their theories with spotting. I believe in giving the person confidence and stability. You put their elbow in your palm and you hold them firm. Even if you're not pushing up, just the squeeze is gonna give them stability and their arm is gonna go up. And then if they need help, I'd rather have someone give me 10, 15% help so I just keep moving smooth and get an extra few reps. That, come on, you got a no pain, no gain shit. One, it could lead to injury. And two, when you get stuck and you're struggling, you're getting weaker and weaker and weaker every second. When you carry a weight, you get weaker. Now, if you're doing PRs and you're powerlifting, it's a whole different story. But you gotta look at it like a, a big bowl, cereal bowl. I think I talked about this last, last video. The muscle fibers, you get weaker every second of the workout. So carrying weights, you always see me like push them, roll them, carrying weights, everything you do, you're weakening yourself. So if you're struggling there to get an extra rep, you're getting so much weaker. It's okay to do that once in a while and push yourself, but what I wanna do is keep moving. I don't wanna get stuck stagnant. So I'll give specific advice, uh, specific instructions. My brain is slow. Instructions to my spotter, stay with me, keep me stable. A lot of people are like barely touching you and then all of a sudden spotting too much. That's another thing. I've had people get under me on the lift and just like try to lift it themselves and it throws me off because like literally they're just pushed too hard. I've had that happen and, and I dropped the weight. So the spot's really important. Tell me I'm garbage, I'm going through something, that's why I ain't calling. Phone and progression, it's all that I wanted. The phone and affection, I summon and dub it. Cause bitch, I got problems on problems on problems on problems on problems on problems. I solve them, I run through the money, the pressure be calling. Left on my blessings, I feel like I'm falling. The birdie is back. Tell me I'm garbage, I'm going through something, that's why I ain't calling. Phone and progression, it's all that I wanted. The phone and affection, I summon and dub it. Why you be all in my line about nothing? Why won't you go get you a dollar or something? Don't hang with a nigga who lying for nothing. I see that we different, you ride and I dub them. I don't do discussions on bragging about hundreds. On so, I've said this a million times before, I'll say it again. The biggest tip I could give for building a bigger chest, especially upper chest, it's not the exercise, it's retracting the shoulder. So watch this. Versus that, what is that, like a full inch, Steve? So, sh rot rotate back. The shoulders are back. You're taking the front delt out of the equation. The chest protrudes and it does more of the work. You're gonna be weaker, but you're gonna use your chest. Here, you're using more of your shoulder. This is hard right now. It's no longer flex. It's so simple, it's so stupid. But when I learned this years ago, within the first month, I saw a thickness and the swelling in my upper chest. Any press you do, even flies, the first one, tuck back and then move. And you will be weaker. Five seconds. Awkward spot, man. Very uncomfortable. Oh, and push. Down slow. Control, ah. slow, 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 slow. Negatives do more damage. Negatives are scientifically proven to do more damage on the muscle and we're stronger on the negative. I know it sounds funny, but if you could press 100 pounds, you could lower like 120 to 140 pounds. So what does that mean? Doing negatives while you're training is good. You're doing more damage. If I do negatives slow three seconds and he doesn't, I'm doing double the work. But forget that. Another concept that, it's not a concept that'll work, it's just very difficult and not so exciting, is don't do any positives. Imagine that. Imagine a year of training of just eccentric, just negatives. It's difficult. You would pick a weight that you cannot press, and somebody would lift it for you, and you would only lower it. I believe that we would grow at the fastest possible rate, but it's not exciting and it's difficult. Like imagine five, five plate squat. I can't squat five plates, at least nowadays, when I was younger I could. I lower five plates and then they take off two plates, I press it up and then they put it back on and I lower it. It's just not practical. You could do it on like machines like electronic, you know? You could do it certain, like if you do 
you raise a weight with leg extensions with two legs and you lower with one or hamstrings, you could do that. But other than that, it's difficult. You need like training partners and spotters. This goes all the way back to the classic age, the golden era, Mike Metzner. I mean, they've, they knew this back then. Doing negatives causes a lot of damage and a lot of growth and you're able to handle more weight. So imagine instead of doing the presses, we only did the negatives. I mean, it'd be an awesome study for somebody to do, but it's difficult. I think, you know, there are some machines out there that will lessen the load. It'd be interesting. I, I would prefer a hydraulic machine over electronic, you know? Woo. I always drink this intro workout. It's one scoop of all nines from Dynatize amino acids. Two scoops of glutamine, some leucine. And then I'll drink some water at the end of my workout and go eat. I don't drink a ton of water during my workout because I don't like my stomach to be bloated. Somebody asked me that the other day. I drink a ton of water when I wake up. I drink between my meals, never at my meals. And I drink easily a liter or two in the beginning of my workout. This is about a liter. So I'm well hydrated, but I don't like chugging water while I'm training. If you're not hydrated, you won't get a pump. Salt and water. If you ever start training and you can't get a pump, take a break, chug some water. And if you have some salt handy or a pickle, as funny as it sounds, a kosher pickle, just keep a kosher, a jar of kosher pickles in your gym bag, you'll thank me. I just doubled up on crypto. I just doubled down on a new vest. Now my chair looking like two checks. Type of money made me wanna two step. Who next? This week I be on the moon next. Stop going up like two X. That's a fast flip like suplex. Two really stepping like a duplex. You bet never lose change, but I do flex on it. I'll black whip, get my coupe on Onyx. And I get brain like I'm hooked on Funix. Can't get a meaning cause I'm booked till August and I look like a dent. Never switch up. It's evident I gotta pick up with the best left off and the best dressed out. Leave a mess when I step in this bitch, dog. My whole click in all black. We all tucks. Tell my ex I'm not really doing the same amount of weight. I'm weaker today. But it's it's mainly mental and it's also conditioning, mental conditioning. Come on, Tom. You condition yourself, you know? I always tell people if you if you give in when it burns, one more. come on. One more. Good, come on. You're conditioning yourself and that's your limit. So like when it starts to burn, if you stop, that's what your body gets conditioned to and adapts to. I've been lifting for many years. So I push my limits. My physical limits are further and my mental conditioning. I get, I get mentally stronger every year and with every prep. But um, I am weaker. Like today, I'm definitely weaker. It's not by that much. Like these are 50 pound dumbbells. I normally don't go heavier than 60. Uh, but just that umph is not there. You know, I'm not as loud. I'm not, uh, you know. What do we do? What do I do? 120 or 130 on incline? 130. 130. That, you know, that was heavy. I don't go that much heavier. Last week I think I did 140s at Bev's. So I am a little weaker. My endurance is less. I'll be doing less reps and sets. But it's just mental toughness. You know, today I'm very drained. Some days are worse than others. Like, I notice if I do like a really hard cardio, the next day I'm a little tired. Yesterday my cardio was pretty intense and I trained back with Tom. We deadlifted 420 pounds for reps. Um, and had a heavy back workout. So to, I was really, really tired yesterday, last night. And my calories got lower. So today is probably my most tired day, this whole prep. But it's just mental, man. It's just mental toughness. Some days are gonna suck, you know? I just try to limit them. I try to have as little shitty days as possible. I wouldn't call this a shitty day and I wouldn't call this workout a failure, but I'm so hard on myself the way that I think. I don't walk away thinking like, oh, you know, this is a groundbreaking workout, but it was a good workout. It wasn't bad by any means. I'm definitely getting leaner. I'm definitely pushing myself. And you guys have to understand, heavy weight and exertion burns calories. 
if I if I go 40 percent or not 40 if I go 20 percent lighter than I did today and I'm just doing reps and reps and reps my body's been doing that since I was a teenager it's not going to do much for me it's not going to burn many calories do you mind handing me that now I'm not saying you guys should be hitting PRs a few weeks out of a show but you should be going as heavy as you can and when I use when I say heavy I'm gonna tell you guys in a second when I say heavy I'm talking about a weight that's difficult, but that you're able to perform your rep range with good form and no pain, no danger. I'm not talking about like sloppy throwing around weights. Sometimes I'll say to someone, that's not heavy enough, go heavier. And they look at the weight like, oh, well, it's 80 pounds. I'm not looking at the weight. You can be deadlifting 800 pounds and I'll say that's not heavy because I'm seeing how, with the ease of which you do it. So if I tell someone it's too light, I, I'm not referring to, I don't care the number and the weight. I'm saying that the way you're doing it, the rep range you're doing, is too easy for you, you can go heavier. So when I say heavy, 20 pounds might be heavy for you guys. What I'm saying is push the intensity. Pick a weight that you can't do more than eight or 10. You know what eight to 10 means, what 10 to 12 means, most people don't even know what the hell that means. It means if you can't do eight, it's too, too heavy. If you could do more than 10, it's too light. Come on, Tom. How many is that? Eight. Nine. Come on. <sighs> Give me three more. Let's go 12. <sighs> all the way up. All the way up. Squeeze. Get that contraction. All the way. Squeeze. <sighs> flex. Flex like you're posing at the top. Flex. Control. Down slow. Five. Four. Slower. 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 Good. That's what eight to 10 means. That's what 10 to 12 means. I mean, it's kind of common sense, but people don't think about it. Good. Three, come on. Four, third of the way, let's go. Let's hit 12. Squeeze the top, exaggerate. Six, come on, halfway. I got you, let's go. Good. Oof. Good. Oof. Come on. Two Oof. more. Down slow. Let's go. Real slow. Five seconds here. Pay attention in the gym. You see everybody just going eight, nine, ten, putting the weight down. Why'd you stop? Because you hit 10, you know, it, that's not, that, that doesn't make sense. If you pick a rep range, 10 to 12, you shouldn't be able to do more than 12. You feeling me? Camera's over there. You shouldn't be able to do more than 12. So 10 to 12 means if you, can, you can't do 10, it's too heavy. If you're more than 12, it's too light, pick another weight. After a while, you guys will get the hang of it and you'll pick weights correctly. The first time, if you pick the wrong weight, it's okay. Put it back and go heavier. 15, 20 reps, it's got its place in time. You can warm up with it. You can do it once in a while. But that's endurance and stamina training. If you're always training at that high rep range, you're never going to build strength. It's good to do five by five, five sets of five, or four to six reps for time period, especially for you beginners, safely to build your strength. Once you got that strength, you apply that to volume. See, Ronnie did tons of volume, but he was strong as an ox. If you're always doing volume, you're not allowing yourself to get strong. That's why bodybuilders have incorporated a lot of stuff from power lifters. And you even have Michael Hearn that calls it power bodybuilding. Because when you put them together, that's when you got that magic of muscle volume, density, hardness, and strength. There's not many bodybuilders out there that have that gnarly, big, full, round, hard look without some brutal blunt force trauma and heavy weight.